Welcome to That Generic Tech Podcast. I'm uh, Tim Matthews. I'm Vinny. And uh, yeah, we're just a generic tech podcast that we just want to talk about everything technology. And uh, this is kind of like episode one slash two, we don't know, but we're, 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 we're pumping it out there. Yeah, kind of around that. Cool. So, uh, and with that, let's uh, talk about uh, our first story, Vinny. Oh, uh, by the way, yeah. actually, you know what? How are you doing? I am doing okay. Oh. I can't complain. I am going on vacation on Friday. I'm going to Florida. That, that's awesome. So Florida. I can't wait for that. Cool. And uh, it's, uh, you know, a lot warmer over there than here. Yeah, I just, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. But I just, I just want to mention that uh, we had a grand total of 27 plays and 32 profile views from our SoundCloud uh, account that we host our uh, podcast on. Well, that's, that's a good start for just starting like that <laughs> for a bunch of nobodies that are just doing it. Yeah, you know, and pretty much I just we're just kind of advertising on Facebook right now, but we tend to get a website going and joining um, uh, some sort of tech network uh, that I've read up on. We're gonna, I'm going to see how that goes along. But, uh, yeah, it's not bad. And we're going to be on the Twitters. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, 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 <laughs> <laughs> we're, on, we're on the Twitters right now. Um, yeah, so uh, right now you can follow us on Twitter at, at TGTP1. You can follow us there. And that generic tech podcast on Facebook. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, not bad. So and with that, uh, let's talk about our first story, which is Apple changes EULA for iBooks author. Yeah, so um, what is all that all about, Tim? Okay, so I, I don't know. Did you, did you see the, the last Apple announcement where they were in New York and they were talking about, you know, um, you know how they're going to revolutionize the tech book industry and all that stuff? Yes, I did. Okay. So, and they announced with that um, a new um, utility for the Mac called iBooks Author. Yes, but so, uh, yeah. that that was already uh, available, was it not? Yeah, it was available. It was available. Yeah, Just, okay. What was in that is, is that it's probably the only way to make the new iBooks format because the iBooks 2.0 does not use proper, like, an, an e- the whole standard for EPUB. It uses an extended thing. So what it does is that it, it's EPUB in the back, but it adds HTML5 extensions okay. to make things more interesting, like to add video and stuff like that. So am I wrong to say that EPUB plus HTML5 equals iBooks? Yes, but that's pretty much – yeah. There's, there's also some other stuff there, but yeah. Okay, okay. So okay. yeah, that's more or less what it is. And you know, the only way to read, read these books is through the iPad. Okay. Okay. So let's let's put that out there. Whenever you create an iBooks author that you want that has like the full interaction and you want it to like be viewable in an iPad, you have to make it through iBooks author, and you can only sell it through Apple. Okay. Okay. Now in the EULA, before it was kind of vague, and it said like, oh, uh, if you make anything that um, that for iBooks and you want to sell it, yeah, it has to be exclusive to Apple iBook Store. Yeah, that's that's what I read as well, and people were very very sketchy about that. Yeah, but the thing is that if you give it out for free, and you export it in PDF or whatever, it's, it's you can give it to anyone. It means you can freely distribute it yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. Now, there was a lot of people, and I've been listening to some people. I won't mention any names, but the persons out there, and <laughs> okay. whatever, and. They're saying like, oh, Apple's being unfair. They're giving us this great utility and we can only sell our stuff through the iBook store, which doesn't make any sense. So if you actually read it and understood it, what it means is that anything that you make with the iBooks author tool, meaning the formatting, meaning like the way it's presented in the i, dot iBooks format, okay. okay, you can only sell it through iBooks. Which which is means that it can only be viewed through an iPad. Okay, which is pretty much the whole point, though. Exactly. So what Apple is doing with that is just saying they're not. Um, how can I say this? They're preventing another iBook store from opening from other publishers to countervent what you know you can see. Okay. In iBooks. 
Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. It's not at all saying if you make a book in iBook store, that means we own all the text and everything that goes along with it and the images. So it's, it's just like, the way it's formatted. Yeah, it's pretty much like, so if you make an iBook, it's not like we own you. It's we just own the formatting. Exactly, because for them it's just the presentation. And pretty much what this change of because it's funny, I got a software update for iBook software and okay. all it did was change Eula. <laughs> it's there the funniest go. like software update I ever had. We're gonna change the Eula, so you have to download this update. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, okay, but like they just made that more clear for people because people were freaking out left and right without actually reading what it actually meant. Because their whole presentation was, you can drag a word file into it and it automatically formats it, and oh. no one is saying that you can't, you know, like use that same text and put it somewhere else. Gotcha. So gotcha. that is pretty much what it is in a nutshell. So pretty, yeah, it's pretty much, let's say I'm an author. I want to write a book. Uh, I could make it available on the iBooks. Uh, well, it doesn't have its own separate store, though. It's, it, everything would still be available through iTunes, right? It's a, no, the iBooks has its own store. Okay, so, it's, okay, so uh, what, what's it called? It's in the iBook store. It's like there's a, in the iBooks application, there's something called store. And you oh, okay, touch so... it and then voila, the shelf rotates. It's like amazing. It's uh, like you found like a secret exit or something. And it rotates and then voila, you're in the store. That, 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 that's cool. That's cool. So pretty much – okay, so I'm an author. I write a book. I put it out there. It's cool. Um, I cannot sell another .ibooks application. I have to sell it in either a PDF format, let's say, or like a .txt format. Or EPUB. Or EPUB. You can sell it as Kindle. There, there, no one's preventing you from that either. Actually, I was I was gonna ask you that uh, Amazon. Let's uh, you know the Kindle. They, they their extension is .dot epub. No, nope. okay. well that's funny too because no one knows that. But well, not that a lot of people in the know know it. But I mean, Kindle's not an open format either. Kindle has its own extensions on EPUB standard, which is a .dot mobi. Uh, okay, okay, extension. okay. So even at that, you Kindle doesn't use EPUB anyway. Mm. And, and it's the same thing. It's more or less like if, you, if you're going to publish to the iBook store and you just want to do it with the iBook store, you can. But let's say later on you want to publish to Kindle, you can do that too because the Kindle is just text. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just text exactly. But I have to give Apple credit here and you know how I feel about Apple. Um, there, the iBooks thing I think is phenomenal. Yeah, I completely agree. It's it's and, probably yeah. the seriously the it's. It, I wish I was a kid again and going to school. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> I'll I, be a lot smarter. Yeah, I like I want that. Oh, right. <laughs> I I want something where I could manipulate and like you know the they showed like you know like um, a three D model of a dinosaur and you get to like turn it around and. You know, check it out. Yeah, that's it's it's. I have to give Apple credit on this one. This one I think is a phenomenal idea. It's great. It's fantastic. The only yeah. thing that that's kind of a bug about it is that how are you gonna get these iPads out? Yeah, that's the thing because they're not very. Uh, how do I say? Yeah, cost effective. <laughs> let's say. <laughs> no, that that's the problem. But the thing is, um, the rumors, let's say, is that when they announce the iPad three, they're gonna lower the price of the iPad two. Okay. So it's going to be like a discounted iPad, but they could probably put that to, you know, schools. Yeah, sure. You know, and at a discounted price, and that will gain more adoption because the iPad two seriously, I uh, unless they really blow me away, with, blow me away with the iPad three. Like the only thing I can see different is that they're going to put like what LTE and what an extra uh, high retina display. Uh, retina, retina display, display LTE, yeah, like you said, uh, what a quad core, maybe processor? A, maybe a quad core processor. But even at that, like if it's for textbooks, you don't need like a quad core processor in order no, to. You know, I, I I don't think tablets need quad cores. Period. Right now. Well, have you looked at the uh, Asus Transformer Prime? Yes, actually, one of my buddies just picked it up, and he says that it's, it's very very fast. It's very fast. Like the there was a. There, I was watching someone and they were playing a game and it looked like something from an Xbox. It was insane. That's was what insane. he told me as well. But the thing is that uh, – anyway, it's still Android. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you really feel, Tim? Uh, it's just – it's cool. It's just the ecosystem is not there. And once the apps come, then it can be viable. But but they, they do have a lot of apps. No. No? For, for uh, like a tablet experience, I, I – 
don't think so. Not not the same quality as what an iPad has. Call me, no. call me a fanboy, but whatever. No, well, you're not you're not a fanboy there because they do have the best ecosystem. I, I, even I'm admitting this, Tim. Like, they have the you can't <laughs> no you can't. They have the the best ecosystem out there for tablets right now. Uh, seriously, I can do anything with this thing. It's yeah, great. So. It's it's great. It's a great mobile productivity tool that mm-hmm. I can do a whole bunch of stuff. Again, it won't replace my de- my laptop because I mean, I'm, I'm I'm an IT technician, so I mean, I still need my laptop. But I mean, for managing stuff like you know an Excel spreadsheet, updating Excel spreadsheet, or or you know reading up on uh, the next certification that I'm going to take, or um, you know even just doing a remote desktop sometimes just to check something, uh, yeah. this thing's great. Yeah. Well, it, actually, that that could lead right into our next topic. Uh, you know, they said like the iPad and the Kindle Fire are not post PC, says IDC. Okay. So, you know, when I read this article, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Steve Jobs said that we are uh, past the PC era. Now we're in um, the PC, the post PC era right now. Uh, but, you know, now people are starting to disagree, saying that. PCs and tablets are going to be coexisting together and they'll be complementing each other. So um, that being said, like you just said, you know, you could use your iPad to remote into, let's say, someone's desktop or you could start a like an Excel sheet or, you know, what, whatever you want to do. Um, in the end, they're going to complement each other, you know. Um, there's a guy, his name is Bob O'Donnell, and he's um, part of the... Uh, from, if I'm not mistaken, he's he's an IDC analyst, and he said, you know, a tablet could be used to start up a project, where a PC is used to put the you know, like the finishing touches on a pro- project and finish it and make it a final product. Uh, what do you think about that? Okay, so it's like. No, officially, it's not like a post PC. It's a like a PC plus era. It's like, come on, give me a break here. It's like call it something, call it something else. I'm telling you, the the tablet is probably the, it's the PC rebooted for a personal computer. Mm-hmm. It's not like a work computer. It's a personal computer. I'll give you a fine example. My mom has a computer and she has an iPad. What do you think she uses the most? iPad, of course. Because she's living in a post-PC era. She still works on a PC because accounting software or whatever, it's on a PC. But again, like everything else, she's going to do it on the iPad. Browse something, look for something up on, the web, on a website. Uh, anything that's used for personal use is for that. And mm-hmm. even at that, we're still very, very early in the tablet race. So I wouldn't be surprised that things start to modern, uh, not modernize, but mature in, in the tablet. So... I honestly, again, it goes back to that discussion we were having before was like, what's a PC? Yeah. Right. And if we're saying that if we're going past a device that has to have a keyboard and a mouse and an operating system, that's like 14 years old, then yeah, we are in a post PC era. But like, I, I, I can seriously see people just working on an iPad. Like, it's p- totally possible. Someone that, like, you know, is just managing stuff and, and organizing stuff and, you know, sending emails and communications. Yeah. It, it, it I depends think on what all, your it, job is. Exactly. Well, I was about to say, it depends on what you're doing. If Okay, like, what what this guy said as well, you know, he said the physical keyboard is still very, very important, which I agree. Because I don't think we're going to be able to type on glass you know, to, to make like, let's say uh, you're, you're, you're writing an article or something. Do you think you could do that for like two hours straight ty- typing on glass? I, I, I think so. And I've done it, but it's yeah. just, yeah, physical keyboards are pretty, are really actually really important. But I mean, so is the hibiscus, mm. right? I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about, this is going to affect not our generation. It's going to affect the generation that's coming up right now. Yeah, like the the, the the people that are in elementary school right now that are that are that are that are growing up with this stuff, yeah. they're they're gonna think that like you know the, people are gonna think like oh the, the the like the DOS command prompt will never go away, but it's like then you got people that just know how to use a mouse and not even the keyboard shortcuts or anything or know to do commands and that's how they work. I mean, oh. it, it's called an it's a, it's evolutionary, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. it's it's gonna it's not gonna happen because. 
to us, like in our generation, because we're so used to the keyboard. We've lived our life through the keyboard. You know, some people thought that handwriting, like writing stuff was always going to be a fact of life, but not anymore. And these days I type everything. Oh yeah, me too. I don't remember writing something, to be honest with you, with a pen, you know? (laughs) So, I mean, like, the only thing I write is like on a whiteboard. But even at that, that's going to be going away, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, if you just, all you got to do is, uh, well... I'm not sure. Maybe you know. But I think there's always going to be a need for a paper and a pen. Um, not necessarily, you know, as in writing a, a, a full blown article, but note taking stuff like that. You know, writing on the whiteboard and uh, doing examples, drawing. You know, um, I'm pretty sure that's going to stick around for for a, lo- a long, long time. And where are you going to see um, this? I'll, I'll call it an evolution of of how computing is done. You're going to see this evolution not in the first world countries, but you're going to start seeing it in other countries where there's not a lot of PC adoption. Okay. And you're going to see, like, they're mostly using the smartphone as their computer. Oh, yeah. And and the tablet as their computer because that is cheaper than getting a, an actual PC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and that's where you're going to see the development. And the, 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 the first world countries that are coming, you're going to see – how things work out you know like to be honest with you the the the, the person who who uh who 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 said this uh bob o'dell bob o'dell o'donnell bob o'donnell yeah bob o'donnell it's it's just playing with words yeah i i think like you know it's 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 it's, it's he, again he's an analyst he's he's getting paid to do this he's getting paid to publish something he had to publish something different than other than it's either it's a pc or it's not a pc or oh we're we rec- we're we're thinking we're projecting that an ipad 3 is going to come out like stating the obvious Let, let's you know <laughs> good, good job <laughs> it's like uh, anyway. he's working for intel secretly tim he's working for intel That's, yeah <laughs> but you know i mean uh like i'm i'm always going to be um uh, uh, you know, like, 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 like Job said, there's like what cars and trucks. Exactly. Right? So I'm always going to be a truck guy. Me too. I'm always going to be a truck guy. Uh, uh, me too. Like I'm going to be using my truck and I'm going to be managing uh, bigger trucks. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. So, you know, I got like, um, I'm always going to be building my own PCs. I don't care. If, you know, I'm always going to be doing that. Yeah. When I, I'm only time I'm actually going to buy a tablet that I really want. It's going to be uh, when Windows 8 comes out on probably a Samsung device or something like that. Which is so good. It's going to be great. Uh, I, I, so. I, have, I have good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling I'm, it for I, Windows 8. I'm, I, I, I want to feel it too. I'm uh, pretty nervous about it because, you know, I am a Microsoft guy or I'm a self-proclaimed Microsoft guy. <laughs> and um, No, you're a Microsoft guy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that it's going to be – you know, all that in the bag of chips in the end, Tim. And that bag of chips. You got to have that bag of chips. That that, that bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um, f- just one final thing to say about that PC Plus thing is that also, you know, right now we still have the need for high end applications which consume more RAM and more CPU power and more storage. So uh, that's something that uh, tablets can't really do at this point right now. Absolutely. The movie developers still need to develop their movies. Yeah. Uh, music, professional musicians still need to make their music. Um, what the iPad does or any other tablet does is that it lowers the barrier of entry to yeah. get into something like that. Obviously, it won't, it won't be as robust as mm-hmm. like what the desktop is. But you know, to say it's like a PC Plus thing, it's kind of like whatever. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, let's get on to the next thing. So Apple fixes Rosetta problems with new security update. I was hoping you could school me on this, Tim, because okay. I know a little bit about Rosetta. That's pretty much uh, applications that ran on PowerPC. Yeah. So what this does, Rosetta is um, – okay, so it's a form of emulation. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when back in the day, what, around 2004, I think, 
or maybe even earlier, I don't remember. But uh, when they moved from um, PowerPC architecture to Intel. Which, which was the ex- best ex- thing they've ever done in their life. It's probably, yeah. Seriously, it's the best thing. Um, yeah. They moved from... To move to an x86 architecture, they had to redesign the OS. And in order to prevent uh, people from crying and everything that their applications don't work, they created something called Rosetta, which okay. is an emulation of... So if you have an application that's running on Rosetta, Rosetta will do the translation between PowerPC and uh, PowerPC commands and Intel commands. Okay. So it's it. backwards compatibility. There you go. So... So there's some applications that used it. Uh, Office up until 2004, no, up until 2008. 2008 was the first version uh, that uh, it went to, to Intel. Okay, yeah, because uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, they they stopped using PowerPC in 2006. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So I mean, uh, Quicken is, is, a, is notorious because they never updated their app. Oh, God, quickly. They, oh, they, my God. They, they, they didn't update their app at all. Yeah. And then yeah. what happens um, when you get the new versions of OS X, Lion, oh, OS X sorry, so you started with uh, Tiger, which that was the first version to have Intel. Then you had Leopard. And then what you had Snow Leopard, which is 10.6. Uh, they started to not include the power PCs for... Um, for the update, so but you still had Rosetta. Okay. Okay. So power, old old Max could not update to ten point six. Okay. And then with ten point seven, which came out last year, OS X Lion, they got rid of Rosetta. Hmm. Huh. So, like completely. Yeah. Oh, so it's gone. It, it's gone. Like they, they they want nothing to do with because Rosetta. Seriously, like there's probably no one that runs Rosetta stuff except for people that use Quicken. <laughs> Which they finally updated when Lion came out. Oh, so, wow, wow, just now. So, well, uh, recently, maybe like a few months ago. Wow. So, but the thing is that people are still running on Snow Leopard, still need to have security updates. So they pushed a security update for Rosetta. So that's why people are still like, wow. So remember what we talked about 10.7.3 yesterday? Yes. Oh, no, yesterday, sorry, last week. Yes. Well, they also updated Snow Leopard as well. So good on them. They're still updating their old SOS, which is good because, I mean, it, it doesn't leave people out in the cold that don't want to update because of old applications that are in Rosetta. Well, yeah, it's, it's like people who are still on uh, XP. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it, so the update broke it, and then they fixed it again. Ah, uh, okay. So there you well, go. Well, good for you, Apple. And all you people still running leopard, Snow Leopard, God, start looking for new software or something, seriously, because it, it's getting really pathetic that stuff's still running on PowerPC. Like, you had, like, what, seven years? <laughs> well, you know, you know, Tim, they're not the only ones. Uh, like, like, people still running XP. I'm like, what's wrong with you? It's time oh. to move on. Yeah, I know. And what, XP's like 12 years old right now? Yeah. Yeah, it's you, you, people. Please, it's it's one thing you have you got to do is you got to upgrade your stuff. Uh, it's 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 amazing. What, whether you're on Mac, you're on PC, you're on you're, you're on Windows, just update your stuff. Try to keep up with the times because if you're still on XP, you got problems. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy, and also yeah. and also if you can while you're doing that translation, put it to 64 bit too because I'm tired of this 32 bit crap. Yeah, 64 bits more secure. It's a lot more secure than 32 bit. It's faster. Uh, and and 64 bits been around since XP too. So let, let, yes, let's get with the time. <laughs> yes, it has. So please, people, this is a message from Vinny and Tim. If you got old hardware and old software, if you're on XP or on an older version of OS X, update, upgrade. You're not gonna regret it. You're gonna be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's all uh, I gotta say about that. That's, that, that thank you. Seriously, oh, it drives me insane every time I have to deal with 32 bit. <laughs> oh, we have to install Windows 7 32 bit. Why? <laughs> yeah, so why? Get just 64 um, bit. Ugh, anyway, there you go. Anyway, uh, and now Canada's in the news. Wow, we're in the news. Can and uh, it's and it's about like an Apple prototype. Uh, I hope this is true. So the Apple iTV, so it's like the actual TV set that they're trying to make. Not the, the little boxy guy. No, not the box. That's the not Apple the TV. Box guy. That's the that's Apple the, TV. That's the okay. So this is this is going to be iTV. 
Yeah, I guess. The no, okay. no, this is pure speculation, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're saying that the prototypes, and it's from the Globe and Mail, which is like the na- one of the, the big national newspapers in Canada, which actually is, has a pretty good reputation. Um, <laughs> so when they report something, it's, you know, they must have heard it from something. Uh, they didn't just, you know, it's not the Times of London or something like that. But anyway, um, <laughs> so apparently Bell, Bell Canada and Rogers, which are both, um, they're ISPs, they're mobile carriers, and they're also um, video, they're cable uh, subscribers, they're cable people. So uh, Bell is the satellite, yeah. and uh, like Dish in the United States, and uh, Rogers is like um, Comcast, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And that's a fair, pretty much a fair comparison. So apparently they're testing the I, ITV prototypes in Canada. That's crazy. That's great. That's and crazy. I honestly think I know why. Why? Because... Like I read the Steve Jobs biography, and there was a point, there was a part in the like in the book, and he says, and he he was really sick, and he had to stay home. It was like bedridden, he'd stay home. So they ordered Comcast, like the whole shebang. He got so frustrated with the interface because he sounds so ugly, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh my god, I can't stand this." He called the CEO of like Comcast. He says, "Oh no, he, sorry, he didn't call Comcast as the CEO. He called like a the support." He says, "Okay, <laughs> you're you're." Your service is shit. <laughs> that's what he says, literally. <laughs> yeah, and, well, that's Steve Jobs for you. And I think I know what he, they're trying to do with the ITV. So the problem, the thing with right now, and this is just pure speculation again. This is not true. I have no insider knowledge. I wish I did, but I don't know. So App, Apple likes to integrate the whole package. And... What's funny is that right now we live in a world where you have you buy a TV that's a stupid monitor, right? And you buy and when you subscribe for service, you have to like rent or buy uh or rent to own a box, yeah. which is the decoder. Yeah. Okay. And with that, you get a you get something from Cisco or uh, uh, Atlanta Scientific or whatever. Whatever. It's, it's ugly as crap. You can never search for anything. Um, trying to record it, it, it's just the ugliest thing ever. And what I think Apple is trying to do here is trying to talk with all the, um, all the cable providers mm-hmm. and have a unified interface that's controlled by Apple that can communicate back to Bell or back to Rogers or back to Comcast or whatever and actually present the information in some sort of neat and organized fashion that it actually makes sense. Mm, I get it. I get Plus, it. also, maybe there's a hard drive on there that also uses apps. So, may, if people that are cutting the cord can run apps as well. Mm-hmm. Again, I honestly think that that, that would make, make the only sense of why they would be testing a TV at Bell and Rogers. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, I, I agree. Um, also, they're gonna want to put things like apparently Siri is gonna be there. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna help them um, determine you know uh, make um, to, like programming decisions like uh, Siri, what's a good um, horror film or something like that. You, you know what? Pretty much what they're gonna do with Siri is that they're, if you looked at the uh, Microsoft keynote and CES and they're demonstrating the Connect. Yes, I'm very sure it will not be that much different, of, or it could be. Maybe it could be a little bit more different, more context sensitive. But I, I, the basic idea, I think, would be from that. Yeah, well, to give Microsoft credit on that is that they've been doing the voice control stuff with Connect for a while. And, yeah. and apparently that works very well. I, I've never tested Connect because I, I don't have a big enough uh, living room to get Connect. Yeah. Uh, but apparently the voice uh, commands on that thing is, is like to the dot. Perfect. So I, I, mean, I mean, that's Microsoft's credit. And, yeah. and you want to know something? It's not the first time Apple takes an idea and runs with it. Um, I mean, uh, let's, let, let's, let's be honest. Everyone does it. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's life. Yeah. If, if you don't like it, then that, that's life. Yeah. <laughs> what I also read too is apparently it's going to have hand gesture control and that, again, that, is connect. comes, that's, that, that comes from the connect as well. I, but, I have a hard time believing that. Me too. But, but Microsoft is already, you know, they're already talking to, um, to uh, Rogers and and, uh, and and service providers in the U.S. Uh, and I actually saw a commercial that they're providing some channels, uh, yeah. not in, 
about it here in Quebec, though, but like I saw a commercial for Ontario region. They have the Rogers On Demand. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can watch that through your, your, your 360 now. Yeah, they have, they have a, a new a thing with the Xbox TV. Yeah, so like they're, I, I guess they're, they're trying to get into that sort of thing, too. Only thing, the only difference is, is that Microsoft is probably going to provide a set top box solution as where Apple is going to provide a built in solution. Yeah. Which or, or maybe who knows in the end I don't know Samsung partners with Microsoft and they put Connect integrated right inside the uh, the TV itself. Who knows? Who knows? Hey, eh? maybe the Xbox 720 is a TV. <laughs> there you go. There's another. <laughs> that, you heard it here first. There you go. This, the <laughs> Xbox 720 is going to be a TV. Done. Done. <laughs> Tim, you gotta like copyright that or something. <laughs> gotta patent it. Gotta patent that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool news, man. That's the, no, that's cool. That's cool. I'm I'm, I'm loving it. Yep. Oh. So, uh, shall we carry on? Ah, uh, absolutely. All right. So uh, we're done with Apple now. Oh, finally. <laughs> man, <laughs> didn't know if I could go through that one. Oh boy. Uh, so let's talk about a bit about Microsoft right now. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you've heard, but I think it's it's um, really, 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 really big news is that Windows 8 will remove completely the start menu. Cool. Yeah. So remember that happy little Windows orb on the bottom left of our screens? Yep. Maybe not your screen, but my screen? Yeah. I love – I see, I love this thing. You have no clue how much I love that start menu. Okay. I love it. But they expanded it. They changed it. Now it's the whole Metro UI is your start menu. They they made it better. Yeah, but when I'm in desktop mode, because with Windows 8, you could go from a touch UI, and then you could you could switch to the desktop mode, which is your traditional Windows 7. Let's go, we'll call it like a Windows 7 background, your Windows 7 desktop. Yeah. That start orb is very, very important. To people like me, though, I'm not maybe I'm not sure how regular consumers use it, but you know I, I'm I'm as well. I'm an IT technician. I'm an IT admin, and this start menu is is like I love it. Okay, so it's yes. very important to me. Okay, I mean the things that you I would probably miss from it if it, if it were to go away would be to go to start programs and all that stuff. But even at that, um. You can still do like I mean for me when I'm in Windows I press start and I start typing and I press enter, which pretty much you can do the same thing here. Yeah. When you go into the start menu, it goes to the Metro, and when you start typing stuff, it'll look for the app and then you. Yeah, which 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 works very well. But you know, I just I think it's a a big part of Windows, and I'm for me personally, I'm going to miss it. Because I like I, I, me too, you know, I'll hit the Windows key and I'll type like command or I'll type notepad or, or something and I'll start it, right? Right. But at the same time, I also have other things there like my documents, my download folder, my uh, control panel, you yes. know what I mean? Computer yeah. network. But can't However. You, can, can't you add them to like the Metro UI, like specific like shortcuts? Uh, apparently, you're, yeah, you're, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, however, what they're leaving, well, they're calling it now. Okay, you know how we have the taskbar now in Windows 7 where uh, you, could, yeah. you, you could pin all your shortcuts and whatever? Yeah. Down? That's going to be called the super bar now. Wait, so what? The, it's going to be called the super bar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's what I read. So I'm not – I'll, I'll probably still call it a taskbar. Uh, the super bar is pretty much the same thing except with, with no window start button. The super bar. Because it's super. just like a hover over thing, no? Like the, you put your mouse over the start where the start button would be. Yeah. And uh, and then boom, like Metro UI comes out. Yeah, that's still there. It's still there. It's just okay. invisible. It's invisible. Okay. But I'm talking about the start orb that's there currently now Windows 7. That's always there and you press start and life's yeah, happy. Yeah, that's, that's like gone and apparently it's, it ain't coming back. Well, they, they, they need to change it. Yeah, I'm going to miss it, but no, I do agree. They, they do have to change it and I'm just hoping that Metro UI is going to work. It, it's got to be perfect, like 100% perfect or else I'm not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you, you want to know something? Um, I think... I think it's going to be a success. Really? Uh, I, I honestly think it's going to be a success. Like, it's going to make 
already like I can say like most of the people that have Windows Seven are one hundred percent for sure gonna upgrade to Windows Eight because it's well, nothing. I don't know if they're gonna do that because I think people with traditional PCs and laptops with no touch UI or no touch interface might be a little afraid of that Metro style. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You get a lot of benefits out of it too. Like you're going to get the app store, like yeah. the Microsoft app store. You're going to get better security updates. Um, yeah. I, I like, like, like what we covered last week is that, you know, when I said that the antivirus will be built in. So that's, that's very nice. You, you know, there's a lot more benefits than just like uh, the, just the UI stuff. Like the, yeah. the UI is going to change, but I mean, it's going to, I'm not going to say it's not going to be a learning curve, but I think people are, are, are going to be curious and it's not going to be that much of a barrier to try it out. Yeah. So people are going to, are, are going to upgrade and try it out and stuff like that. And then, yeah. Well, I, I think when they see that the actual tablets come out, it's going to look really, really nice. Yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah. The tablets, like the, you know, they just, it just looks really crisp on a tablet. I don't know if you saw like the, the prototype, that's yeah. the Samsung one. It's running like an Intel, and um, yeah, that's why I think people are going to go to the stores like Best Buy or Future Shop and be like, wow, hey, what the heck is that over there? You know what I mean? Like, it's because the, the, the Metro UI, I think, it looks phenomenal. But, you know, we got to, you know, things could be as pretty as they can be, and then in the end, what if it just doesn't work and people just don't like it and they're just turned off by it, and you never know. Well, probably there's some way to registry hack to get rid of all that stuff and, you know, Wear a tin foil hat and go back to how nineteen ninety five was. Well, <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out soon because the consumer preview. It's this uh, month, eh? It's this month, yeah. For those of you who care about getting maybe downloading an early copy of Windows eight just to play around with, um, it's gonna be apparently available on February twenty ninth. February 29th, that's like the last possible day that they can yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, they're holding some sort of event, I think, in Spain, and they're going to be – I think they're also going to be talking about a w- bit of Windows Phone 8. That would be good. And as well, they're going to be uh, they're gonna be launching the uh, consumer preview. Uh, and, the, and, and yeah, they're, they're also launching the, uh, the Microsoft App Store, and there's going to be like um, apps available right away that you can download. Yeah, I saw the list of games. Yeah, like solitaire and like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, you're 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 an actual like app store when you have Angry Birds. Yeah, and apparently they're gonna have Angry Birds right off the bat. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that meme to die. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Birds was cool like two years ago. Yeah, I never. Now I'm fed up. <laughs> um, I was done before even before even started. I saw it and I was just like, "What the heck is the big deal?" I've played. Like, you remember Worms? Yes. There you go. That's the only need, the game you need like that. <laughs> anyway. So there's a child-friendly version of Internet Explorer Nine, eh? Yes, there is, and what immediately because you know I work in the school industry. It's true. And I'm like, hey, this it might be really, really good because so, you, you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're running, I just think it's good to have a web browser that's going to be pretty much locked down right out of the box. And also, you can flag stuff that's for um, cyberbullying and stuff like that. So yeah. it uh, provides an easy access for uh, children to report cyberbullying and inappropriate images, as well as seek help uh, on a range of topics so i mean that's great that's that's yeah, cool that's, uh, that's, that's um, yeah. just my only thing is that maybe this should be baked into internet explorer 9 not just have a a customized version of internet explorer 9 yes it should be baked in it, How, it, like, it should I, be I, part of the os and it's just a feature it's like part of the like parental controls yeah it should like there, there should be yeah like maybe not no, it, it should be available in any version of Windows you buy, actually. Yeah, yeah you're right. It, it, sh- it should be. But, I mean, uh, this is good on them to, to, to e- even do this, you know, because no one else is doing this, which is yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, kudos to the big machine in Redmond for that. And also, they, who they partnered with? They partnered with the, the CEOP, the uh, Child Exploration, Exploitation, Explo- sorry, exploitation, yeah. Jesus, an online protection center. Yeah, there you go. So uh, I want to – I'm going to try to download this 
Yeah, let uh, me know how how that goes. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it some other time uh, with more detail. Cool. So on to the Android part. Android, right. yeah. yeah. Let's do some Android. I'm sure Tim is happy about this one. Okay, so well, you know what? It's fine because the military government officials could get secure Android phones. Cool. Um, this is probably like the only OS that they can do this. Yeah, but okay. Because I, I mean, fairly they have the source code. I mean, they can get a phone. They run their own like version of Android. Because Android is open source, you can take it. But again, yeah. uh, like you can, you can have military officials to go lock down the phone, and it won't be like you know the Galaxy Nexus where it has like everything, and you know it's more like probably these phones are going to be super tailored to military officials, and they probably won't do much in terms of like what a smartphone, like what an iPhone can do. Like probably, it, it, probably the first thing that they will do is. See if they if they find anything about Angry Birds and destroy the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you blow up now. You, you blow up. You're you're done. They, they take like a, like an M16 out and they just start like hammering the phone. This phone will self destruct because you played Angry Birds and like a covert but, operation. Okay, if if you if you lock down the kernel, all right, yeah. and you make it custom, isn't it still like dangerous and hackable? I mean, because it, it's Android hackable. and like everyone, yeah, I know everything's hackable, but like, you, isn't you, it? Like, I don't it's know. more the military t- try to take control of like their OS. Like, mm-hmm. if they take the if take a, a base that's already good, l- inspect it, understand it, and then deploy it on its own special phones. Yeah, like more secure Android phones so, uh, with more like let's say hardware hooks. Yeah, so there's no exploits to like rooting it and stuff like that because that that would be a no no. So it would be it would be so locked down and so customized that it would be like I don't know unhackable almost. Well, it would probably be really encrypted. Yeah, you know, it probably it, it would probably take some more security. Like I, I don't think they're actually taking like a Motorola Droid. I, I'm not. I'm totally don't think that. I think it's they're they're, they're going to partner up with a manufacturer to to make hardware and they're going to take the OS and they're going to flash it onto it and make sure it's encrypted and whatnot. That, that, that's what I think that they're going to do. Which is, it is pretty cool. At least they're not using Blackberries. <laughs> you just had to, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you just had to, you know, put that little nail on that coffin. And... <laughs> hey, if they were using Blackberries, they would have never found Osama. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you know, I, I bet you they were using Windows machines, by the way. Oh, yeah, of course. Right? They were using Windows It was machines. the first thing you posted on my Facebook. <laughs> you remember that, huh? Uh, it was the best picture. You, po- you see a picture, right, of, of Hillary Clinton and, and, and uh, Barack Obama with a bunch of military officials, and they're all on PCs, <laughs> and they're, uh, like on Dell PCs, and they're looking and they're seeing how, like, the action unfolds in front of their eyes of Osama bin Laden being <laughs> killed and everything. And then on the other side of the picture, you have a bunch of people with Max in a coffee mach- uh, coffee shop. <laughs> and it says, Do you remember the caption for that? Uh, I don't remember exactly you, the caption, you, you, but you, you can, can imagine. Update, yeah, you can update your Twitter on Max and uh, PCs help and uh, help track and kill Osama bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, Tim. <sighs> So apparently this is not only for phones, though. They're also going to be doing it for tablets. Yeah, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's which is good on them. They, 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 they should do it because if they did it with anything else, it would be kind of – they're relying on other things, which they probably don't want to do. So do you think that maybe this could span out to maybe companies doing this themselves? Like, <laughs> no. Uh, no way. It's not cost-effective. Hmm. It's, it's but, not cost effective unless you're like super secure company that really, 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 really cares about this stuff. But if, for military, you have to like you have to have like a self destruct button or something like that. And it, it, yeah, exactly. And when you're like in a company and it gets lost, you can remote wipe, and that's pretty much as like good enough. So I guess you know, uh, you know, going back to the BlackBerry thing, they were. At a point, king of like most secure uh, mobile OS out there. Yeah. yeah, and and I think well, you know what? They probably still are. 
Yeah, because in the it's ecosystem, that, it's super encrypted. But it's just that you yeah. have to trust BlackBerry, and BlackBerry had an outage. Yes, and we did. live in a world. We now live in a world of anonymous. Yes, and we do. All these, um, all these hacker groups that w- we need to. The, the military needs to take matters in their own hands. Like the Black, BlackBerry, everything goes to Canada, and then Canada will then deal with how they talk back to the bad servers. Yeah, for BlackBerry. So I mean, it's a single point where I mean. Anything can happen within that company because they're employees. They're not military officials. They didn't, you know, yeah, sign up their life for that. Of course. So this was a surprising news this week. Three years on, Chrome at last arrives on Android. Okay, my first question for this is why did it not come uh, <laughs> when they first launched it? <sighs> it it be on me. It's like everything. All of a sudden, they discovered how integrated solutions work. <laughs> Where, <laughs> if I you know? bookmark something on my on uh, on uh, Chrome and Android, it bookmarks it on Chrome on the desktop. And like, congratulations! It's uh, I don't understand <laughs> how this didn't was not there earlier. And I thought that the internet, because in Android, the, the, the internet browser is called Internet. That's so, that's original. Yeah. So um, it's just that uh, I don't know. Like I thought it was based off Chrome, and they just called it Internet, just because they didn't want to change the name or anything. But there was yeah, but actually it, a different app. Yeah, it wasn't at all based off Chrome. No, not at all. Yeah. So that's surprising. So, uh, but uh, it still is. Uh, it's still in beta, though. I think, no. Yeah, it's in beta. It's like, yeah, it's you know. It's it's uh, Firefox beat them to it, <laughs> unfortunately, because <laughs> they have the Firefox browser on go, Android. Firefox Go, and that already syncs stuff and everything. So, but anyway, I mean, better late than never. And if it's faster and if it's better, hey, um, this, yeah, exactly. I mean, if if it, if it does the job and it's the best one out there, good. I just don't understand why they wouldn't just bang right away. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they ran into some trouble. Who knows? So. The interesting point about Chrome is that um, it will not run Flash. What? Yeah, it doesn't run Flash. It, it does not support Flash. Now, uh, uh, l- let's couple that. Let, let's put that aside for now. Let, let's just keep that fresh in our minds. Yeah. Put that aside. Okay. Now, let's talk about Google's new security for the Android market, which is called Bouncer. Yeah, that Bouncer thing. Okay, so Bouncer... Is 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 something that when an, a developer submits an app to the App Store, yeah, or the Google App Market or whatever the hell it's called, Android Market, sorry, um, it will scan for known viruses, and then we'll post it. Or if there's if they find a virus or unusual activity yeah. from known things. Uh, it will also email the, the the developer saying, "Oh, you have this thing, da, 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 whatever." So it could. So w- that with no flash. When do we start calling Android an iPhone? Hmm, you're 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 treading somewhere I don't want to go. Oh, I'm gonna be treading there. Oh, because, you're treading. I don't want to go. I, I remember watching Google, um, the Google I/O conferences and the and even adobe came up and he's like oh we're developing mobile flash for android because you know apple sucks and we need to have flash on the mobile devices even though it never worked and um and then also like our app store is open and free and anyone can put anything they want and charge whatever the hell they want and life is good because we live in an open environment and now they're saying that their new browser is cannot will not will not run flash and now they are curating their app store. Yep. No, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, so what argument is left for Android that's open? It's still open. It's still – it, well, it it's, it's still – well, okay, it's, it's not as open as – yeah, open source as in anyone could use it or whatever. Uh, but no, it, it's, it's good that they're doing this. It's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. It's 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 a great thing, uh, but I do remember all the 
bashing about no flash on iPad, no flash on iOS, iPhone. I do remember that, and it's just I find it very, very funny that they just dropped it on Chrome, which is their flagship browser, which is what, in the end, Google is pretty much known for, mm-hmm. aside from their search engine. You know, when you think about Google, you don't think about Android right away. No. You know, you, know, you think... You think about Android as Android. Yeah, you think, you know, Chrome, and you think Google, Google Search. And, you know, it's just it's just funny how they, they just dropped it now, and... Um, yeah, I guess now what, what I mean, they they can still run a uh, flash off their internet browser, right? Yeah, because that's that's just a plugin. It's, it's a plugin. Know. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's just uh, yeah, even Adobe has admitted that like it, flash is dead on the mobile platform and they 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 even stopped develop, develop like they're stopping they stop they're going to stop updating um mobile flash and for, I'm for I'm Android as well, which probably would take be a part of this. But even at that, it's like, I don't know. It's like, because wait until we get to our first story about how uh, Google is going to reject an app for suspicious activity, even though it's going to be a false positive. Watch. Yeah. That, that it's going to happen. It is, of it's course. It's going to happen. And with Google's support mm-hmm. that they're known for, which is not there, I, it's going to happen sooner than later. I'm telling you, because there's a, in the Google App Store, in the uh, app market, the Android market, there is apps that you can get that you can change your CPU cycles if you rooted your phone. Yeah, you could. Uh, there's rooted uh, apps. Yeah. You you so, could you could uh, what's it called? Overclock it. Yeah. So yeah. what will not make that flag the bouncer as saying that's a, a malware? It, it does suspicious activity. You're absolutely right. So, so I it, guess uh, they're going to have to be doing some some real digging when you have a, a developer offering something that could overclock your PC, but you know it, it, you can't they can't really categorize it as being malware or suspicious. Exactly. So th- they're they're starting to curate, and it they're going to learn the pains that Apple had to go through in the first three years of the of the App Store. Curating sucks. Yeah. And good luck with that, Google. Yeah, well, uh, Microsoft's doing it. He, he, he. Well, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. and the, they, they, they've been doing, they, they've been at it for a while. Well, but, they've been at it for a long time. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they've been getting good at it, so. Yeah, so, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a good thing that doing that. However, it's just funny that they just dropped Flash and uh, now they're starting to scan. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, and I, I don't know if you know this, but like uh, with, let's say if you're Samsung and you're coming out with the Galaxy uh, S3, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say which we're gonna talk about next. Yeah, <laughs> same way. <laughs> uh, but like, let's say if if I was Samsung, I was coming out with the Galaxy S3. You know that it's the Google, the Android operating system is not free. Is it not free? I thought it was supposed to be free. No. Let's if you it, want your Google, your your phone to be Google approved, meaning you have the Google logo in the back of your phone, um, in order to have the Gmail app and the calendar, uh, not the calendar, but yeah, but the Gmail app and the Android market, you need to actually get a process approval by Google okay. for your phone, okay. and you have to pay. Huh? Yeah, th- these are things that people don't, not a lot of people are aware of, and oh, it, wow. it's, it, 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 you know what. It, I, Tell me that you're you're a company that's that your your interest is to make money and make something good. Don't give me this philosophy that you're better than everyone. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it out there. Anyway, <laughs> send hate mail to me, uh, <laughs> Tim. Tim, how do you really feel, buddy? <laughs> how I'm, do I mean, you really like, feel, Tim? Google makes some great stuff, but sometimes they they, they say some things that just. Brush me the wrong way. Anyway, send hate mail to me. <laughs> <laughs> I will be sure to post your email, buddy. For, perfect. Do it. But but that's okay. We we need to have you know a broad audience. We we need we we need this kind of stuff. Mm. You know, there's going to exactly. be times, me Tim. You know, I'm warning right now that we're going to start fighting. Which is great. Which is good though. It's good if we start fighting, and then you know, then we have to challenge each other to you know like a race around the world. Because I... <laughs> because there's. 
Seriously, I love listening to two people argue. It, but it's 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 good though. It's great because it's, it's stimulating. Yes. And I, I'm not saying as a joke. I'm being serious. Yes, when I no, hear two people good. argue about two different aspects and they're they're both having a good argument, it's it just it, it's great. I love it. It is great because you get so much information from it. Exactly. You you and, hear and, a different you, point of view from what someone yeah. else is saying and then you get arguments and it's and, great. And you know, you're 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 getting you're getting grade A information because you could tell that these two people are very passionate about these two things. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm just warning whoever's listening right now is that one day me and Tim are going to are going to get into a fight about Apple and uh, Microsoft. It's going to happen. Yeah. We just we don't know when, but it will happen. And <laughs> um the internet that day will explode. Yep. Uh, more or less like my computer will blow up. We will break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we will break the internet. All, All right. right. So um I read today, and I was very excited. Okay. Apparently, it's still a rumor. Okay. So, no, don't quote us. But it, it's, 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 it's nice to pretend. It's, I love rumors. Okay. Right? Okay. I love rumors. So, okay. uh, apparently, March 22nd is going to be an announcement about the Galaxy S3 from Samsung. It's going to be held in a media event in France. And apparently, it's going to be launching before summer. Here's where that rumor Aspect really comes into play. All right. So mm-hmm. before summer, I don't know, uh, whatever, February, March, April, May. So I'm May guessing would be the latest. May would be the latest. Uh, it's going to have a 4.6 inch screen, 720p, super AMOLED display. Wow. Uh, 1.8 gigahertz dual core. 1.8. 1.8 dual core. I don't know how to pronounce this processor, so bear with me. Uh, Zynos, or I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but uh, Zynos. So E X Y N O S. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's we're calling it Zynos from now on, right? Okay. Uh, two gigs of RAM and a 12 megapixel camera and apparently just seven millimeters. That's 0.2 inches thick. Tim. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty thin. That's like very thin. That that's, sounds fantastic. Okay, so when you get hardware like this, okay, mm-hmm. and it's with Android, and I, I'm, I, this is your so – for me, I don't mind Android. Um, I'm, I'm, right now I have a Windows phone, but mm-hmm. I, I'm looking at some Android phones because I've always been very interested in Android. To me, this is very, 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 how can I put it, tempting. And for you, you know, because I know you like your, you, you love hardware. Yeah. We, we all love hardware. Uh, however, it's running Android. Would you, you know, bear with Android just to get this nice piece of hardware? Yeah. I, I mean, I, Android's good. Android is good operating system when it comes to the phone. It's great. I mean, like, it, it runs. It runs its thing. It, it's great. The only thing that screws up about it is that third parties put their crap on it, and it sucks after. So when you root it and you put in fresh ROM on it that's, like, just pure Google, it runs actually a lot faster. Um, I would not – even though the hardware sounds amazing, mm-hmm. I'm very reluctant to get any phone on <laughs> Nexus phone. Yeah, 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 because you're afraid – of the uh, the the update, that's right? exactly it. Yeah. I mean, Samsung is notorious for updates. But it's doesn't, notorious. Doesn't it's ridiculous. Do, doesn't Samsung make the Nexus? Yes, but it's okay. not. It's not. Um, they don't control the OS. It's like a oh. partnership with Google. Yes. So all they do is make the hardware, like a reference hardware, and then Google like puts like this, tailors the software to it. So pretty much the Nexus is the purest uh, Android Google phone that you will get on the market, hands down. Yes. Okay. Any and Nexus. The, and the S series, the S3, would have some of Samsung's things on top. Yeah, it would probably have um, TouchWiz, which and, is... And, and like Motorola's version of that is called uh, Moto Blur or something like that? Motorola? Yeah, yeah. it's Moto Blur. Yeah. So yeah. this... So okay. I... I 
uh, again, like the only one that actually is kind of cool with the, the, the skin overlay is the HTC Sense UI, which okay. I, I have on my HTC here. And it, it's it's nice. It's cool. Like, it doesn't get in the way. It's cool. But, I mean, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I have a hard time getting excited about Samsung screwing up, like, like putting third-party crap on it. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I hate any operating system with, that comes with third-party applications. Like, you know. Oh, so you like, hate Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it, well, I was, just, I was just about to say, if you go buy an HP or you go buy a Toshiba, you know, they're, they're good systems. Don't get me wrong. They're, yeah. they're, they're great systems. The hardware is there. Yeah, it's just that when they put this HP Customer Appreciation Program or HP Photo Imaging Software and HP Write Easy CD, you don't need all these things because Windows already has all these things. And all you're doing is slowing it down in the end. Yeah. But anyway, we're getting into a different topic now. Yeah, but it's just it, – it's cool. I mean let's keep upgrading the hardware. Let's keep pressuring other manufacturers to, to up their hardware and to offer something better. But like – my only thing is that also wasn't the Sam, Samsung Galaxy S2 like announced like in quarter three of 2011? Yeah, it came out not long ago. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick. It's fat. Well, look at the the Motorola Razor, the the Razor yeah, Mac. Yeah, the Razor was we, quick. we spoke about last week. It, yeah. It's like, what? It's the the first one has been on the market for like three months. For not even like three months. Yeah. And then bang, you get this, and that's another phone that I would love to have as well. You know what, Tim? I just want to have everything. I've told you this before. I just want <laughs> one of everything. Yeah, I know what you mean. Is that too much to ask? No. No, it shouldn't. You should get you everything. Know, like, just, just one of everything. I'll be happy. <laughs> so anyway, that's the rumor for the Galaxy S3. I hope it happens. I want it to happen. Um, I have a little diabolical scheme um, under my sleeve uh, to see if I could get um, two new phones. You, you, you know what you could, is, do you have like a warranty with like someone? I do have a warranty. Ooh. Uh, with um, I forget where I bought my phone now. Uh, Caban Telefonic. Okay. I think for for you, anyone else who's listening outside, that's like I don't know, like a, a cell phone store. Okay. It's like a Radio Shack or something like that. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I have a little plan that I'm gonna try to. You know, I'm gonna to try to get that out there. Uh, I'm gonna to try to get two phones and have my um, pick of them. Well, you didn't hear this from me, okay. but if you put it in the microwave for like one second, hmm. it fries like the uh, screen. Hmm. Like it just turns off the screen, and oh, then but... and then it it just you can just say, "Oh, but my phone doesn't work anymore. I have a warranty." I swear, I don't know what happened. I have no idea. It just... It died. <laughs> Is my phone supposed to spark in the microwave? <laughs> um, no, but actually my plan is... This is what I'm going to do. It's no, no, no big secret. Um, my fiancé and her mother have, uh, two f- have a phone each. Okay. Uh, and they're, they, they have crappy plans. So I was going to call my phone company and try to get them on a family plan... Get two new smartphones, two uh, high-end smartphones, have my fun with those two, and give one my Windows phone and kind of rotate. Wow, that is a lot of work. No, not really. <laughs> you know, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two phones. Uh, like, let's say I'll get the Galaxy S3 and the new Motorola Razr, and I'll be like, okay, which one do I like better? And then I'll take one and then give uh, my Samsung Focus to uh, whoever I uh, see fit. Cool. That's my plan. That's, that sounds like a good plan. And then I'm happy because I have a brand new phone. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Cool. It will happen, Tim. <laughs> you, you, keep us updated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, right. And now it's BlackBerry. Black, our favorite. Yay. No, no, people, in all honesty, okay, uh, we both love BlackBerry. I love them. We Go, love BlackBerry. Oh, oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. I have a BlackBerry playbook. I use it every. I could. I. I could say with all honesty, I use it every day, whether it's browsing the internet or playing solitaire, <laughs> or not doing stuff with it, or not doing stuff with it. Um, 
listen, it's good for what it does, and that's all I'm going to say. If it's at $150 or if at $199, I say, you know what, just go buy it. If you want a tablet just to browse, uh, I'm going to be using it to go to Florida, which is perfect. I have a web browser. I could check my email. Uh, I don't have to carry on a laptop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't have to bring my 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 precious laptop, my uh, Lenovo ThinkPad Edge E220s. Yep. I don't have to, I don't have to bring that. I could just bring my BlackBerry tablet, and um, I could do what I got to do. So you know, in cases like this, it's good right now. There is an update coming for it, though, folks. There's an update, and we're gonna get the calendaring. We're gonna get the built-in email client. Finally, which me and Tim have been just. You know, <laughs> discussing. We've been, we've been praising. We've been praising BlackBerry for not including email because <laughs> that that means I'm completely disconnected, which is what I want. Yes, we want to be disconnected from I, the world. I, seriously, it's a blessing when I'm when I'm at home and I don't get email. It's a oh, feature. Oh, yeah, it's a feature. It, it's a that's, feature. That's what they were doing this whole time. <laughs> you BlackBerry, you got some tricks up your sleeve. They were trying to make us more zen. More zen, exactly. It's like you, you could just browse the internet. That, that's it. Stop thinking about applications and you know Facebook things that you want to do. Yeah, just <laughs> just concentrate on that. And when you get to work and you open up Outlook, then think about your email and get paid for it. And get paid for it. Um, so <laughs> that being said, uh, where was I going with this? Yes, apparently, Rim says that the app world is more profitable than Android. Well, yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot of free apps on Android. <laughs> Android Android has the freemium model where they give you like Angry Birds. It's a perfect example. Angry Birds on the i on the i on the iOS uh, app store is 99 cents. You have to buy it. Voila, it's yours, you own it. On Android it's free. But you have ads. Okay. So And then Blackberry, it's like seven ninety nine. No, I, I have no idea. Yeah, it's it's pretty expensive. It is? I don't think it's seven ninety nine, but uh, it's it's pretty expensive. It, I, it, yeah. It, yeah. I, I, when I saw I'm like, ooh, Angry Birds, and then you know, I'm not a big fan, but I'm like, yeah, might as well just download it. And I saw the price and I'm like, yeah, not happening. Yeah, because yeah, yeah higher profitability it, it depends. Are we are we counting um, are we counting the revenue that they're coming in with the freemium model? Because I've been hearing a lot of reports that actually the freemium model is a lot more profitable than selling the app. Because if you have an app that's really like makes people want to like go and play the game like every day, yeah. and you're giving them ad impressions like what once every two levels, let's say, right? And multiply that by because the app is free, so you have a lot more adoption base. Yeah, equals. Probably a lot more money than the person paying ninety nine cents for the app one mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. E- even if the person doesn't really play it that much, as long as he played it for the half an hour, it probably paid itself. It probably did. So anyway. And no, I mean, well, and which is, I was blown away by this when I heard this. Six million daily app downloads in the. BlackBerry app world. Yeah. Six million is a lot. It's okay, but like they could have just stopped there. Daily and downloads? That would, and, th- and that would have been that would have been impressive. They could have just stopped there. Like there are over six million downloads from BlackBerry App World every day. Well, they could have just stopped there. That would have been like, wow, okay, cool. That's pretty impressive. No, 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 no. But it, l- let's get re- let's keep reading this, Vince. L- let's keep going. So, so what's the next part that they put on the slide? I don't want to read it. <laughs> okay. So that's 174 million downloads per month. Okay. Or nearly 30 downloads per year per user. That <laughs> 30 downloads per year per user, that's when they, they, they could have just stopped at the 6 million downloads every day. Yeah. I, right. I don't know. I don't right. know how to how to take this. Why Why do they keep going? I don't know. <laughs> like don't know. It, it's not impressive anymore. It, like, it's 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 funny because you read the comments after that people leave, and it's just like, yeah, this guy doesn't know how to lie properly. Yeah, because <laughs> seriously, <laughs> no one believes him. Like you could have stopped there, and it would have been like, 
Yes, that, that's yeah, cool. Think... That's giving me something. And now people are only downloading 30 apps per year. Per year. Yeah. That doesn't really mean much because uh, well, iOS, know. you can download a lot of apps in a year, like more than 30. I, I know I've downloaded at least more than 30 apps per year. For sure. For it's, sure, uh, because they're uh, engaging apps. I don't know. I don't know how to take that one. But uh, that, that's – we just want to let everybody know that um, BlackBerry App World is, is the best. Is the best. Uh, and we love them, and they are doing everything right, and they don't need to change anything. I but, really can't wait. You're funny, Tim. <laughs> they don't got to change anything. They're good. And I hope a new hockey team comes to Canada. Go, Jim Balsili. Yes, Jim, Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, I really hope that this the, the BlackBerry update does come out soon because, like I said, we're going to be getting the email, the calendaring, no BlackBerry Messenger, but that's okay. Um, and we're apparently getting Android apps. That's well. actually pretty smart. That That is very smart. They're giving away a free uh, BlackBerry playbook for every developer that's, that's porting their code from Android to, to, uh, to uh, the playbook. That's good. Smart. That's very good. That's smart on 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 Rim's on Rim's part, uh, because you've gone to like you've gone you, you've gone to having like uh, ten thousand apps. Which okay, they probably have more than that, but I'm just <laughs> tossing out some random number. <laughs> Let's say if I don't know how many how many apps do you think the BlackBerry App World has? Should we do this live? Let's let's do this live. We'll try I, to do this live and as fast as possible. Honestly, if not, we just edit this here, out. Here, here, here. 300,000. 300,000? 300,000 apps. Okay. No, that's, that's too high. Why? What am I thinking? That is too high. <laughs> okay, can we... uh, okay, wait. No, no. Probably, okay, 100,000. Really? Are there... I'm trying to... Wiki... I'm trying to it's wiki... not even in like the Google like instant. There okay, in... size. 60... I, was, I was right the first time. 60,000 plus apps. 60,000? I overshot. Yeah. I gave him too much credit. See, that's how much I love BlackBerry. I'm very optimistic for them. And apparently, okay, here's the milestones. Downloads per day. July 30th, okay, July 30th, 2010, they had a million downloads per day. Up until now, February 7th, 2012, 6 million uh, downloads per day. So they pretty much read the same ad article that we read. Awesome. So anyway, um, they're gonna be they're they're gonna go from fifty thousand apps to a lot more in like one day, which is incredible, actually. That's yeah. Well, yeah. The 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 Android marketplace has a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had a way of a head start, and also the the, the, the there's more people going towards Android that want to get apps. Than Here we go. Or... They have uh, ten million apps. Who, uh, no, Android? Sorry, wow. <laughs> 10 million? I'm like, Jesus. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I read that wrong. My goodness. 400,000 apps. Pl- pl- so they have 400, plus 400,000 apps. Cool. So you got BlackBerry that's currently at like 50K. They're going to be going to, let's say, 400K in like a day, which is, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. And apparently... For Apple, there's over 500,000 apps. There you go. For the phone part. not That's not including the iPad. The iPad part. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So now let's go to a section that uh, is like gadget lust. It's, oh, God. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's called want. Want with three exclamation points. Want. Want. <laughs> <laughs> and I want this. And for those of you who don't know what a solid state drive is, uh, go to Wikipedia and type in solid state drive. Just, <laughs> you could go to Google and type in God. <laughs> type in God. <laughs> because this thing is amazing. Yeah. Uh, solid state drives are just um, pretty much, you know that little uh, USB key that you have uh, sitting around at home? It's pretty much a giant USB key uh, for a computer that you just plug in there. You install your operating system on it. It's a hard drive, but it's solid state. It's not a spinning disk, pretty much. I like to say it's it's a it's a hard drive of of um, of RAM. It's, it's, it's RAM. Yeah, there you go. It's a hard drive of RAM, and um, these things are incredibly fast. Uh, you could install 
Windows 7 in 7 minutes. Yeah, it's really on fast. On these things. I remember I, I did 15 minutes, I installed the uh, Lion on my, on my Mac here. And it makes things so much faster. It, it, it does, makes, yeah. uh, it's just, it's, it's so much better when you, you don't have to wait for the computer and the computer waits for you. It's like yeah. makes you feel so much more productive. Yeah, but, because yeah, because I mean, in the end, the hard drive is pretty much your bottleneck. Now, yeah, now nowadays, the, the, your hard drive is the bottleneck. Like, yeah, no, no doubt that that is definitely it. Yeah. So, the the one that you want, which one do I want? It's the Intel SSD five twenty series. Yes, that's the one I want. Wow, it's the twenty five nanometer NAND memory process technology and it's powered by LSI Sandforce Flash Storage processor with firmware that Intel co defined and validated. And apparently it's gonna send a new benchmark for SSDs. Which is yummy for us. Apparently, well, from what it the drive does it uses is that it's gonna use SATA three. Mm-hmm. Which that is probably where you're gonna get your huge speed boost. Yeah, because it's probably. it's because SATA two uses three gigabits per second. These this guy is using SATA three, which is six gigabits per second, which is fast. It is very fast, and your computer is going to fly after this. Uh, I want one right now. Um, um, however, yeah, it's pricey. Oh uh, yeah, especially yeah. being yeah. a uh, an Intel solid state drive, they're going to be ranging from one hundred forty nine dollars to apparently a thousand dollars. For the 240 um, gig? Oh, no, wait. For, for, the... uh, for a 480 gig. Yeah, um, that's yeah. huge. That's the problem with solid-state drives right now is that they're they're expensive as compared to your traditional um, hard drive. You yeah. know, like you could, get, you could get a one terabyte or like a two terabyte for like how much, Tim? Nine, nine bucks? For what? It's a two, two terabyte? Yeah, nine, nine bucks. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, what you're sacrificing uh, when you buy an SSD you're sacrificing the cost and you're sacrificing uh, storage space. However, the, per- the performance is just phenomenal. And uh, just important point, they didn't give a consumer price for it. This is just, those are the prices if you buy a thousand units at a time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but for the geeks, let's just say that it can deliver a maximum of 80,000 IOPS at 4K random write and also 50,000 4K random read IOPS. Um, which is uh, really, really, really fast, which is if, you, if you're doing high sequential read performance, it will goes up to 550 megabytes per second. Yeah, that's and, megabytes, yeah. Mega, yeah, megabytes. And, yeah. Um, and also 520 megabytes for writes. So yeah. it, that's really, 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 really fast compared yeah. to the yeah. SSDs that you have now are, can go up to 250. Around like your typical yeah, SSD, w- w- which now. is still like incredibly fast. <laughs> yeah, because uh, a computer, oh, let's say, um, how can I say this? Um, the desktop regular spinning hard drive is usually about eighty megabytes per second. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that's a really really good hard drive with like seven at least seventy two hundred RPM. Yeah, we're we're talking about yeah yeah we're talking about decent hard drive here. So yeah. So, so this 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 puppy is uh, is is huge, and then you can go even more all out with you have like a RAID zero and stuff like that. Oh my and god, you then, can make yeah yeah. I, I definitely gotta. I want. I definitely want this. However, you know, price is always an issue. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get the one that I'm pretty much gonna get the one that you got, Tim. Yeah, the OC, OCZ Vertex Two. Yeah, which yeah. is I'm, I'm, I want to get the how 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 big is yours? How big is it? It's one twenty. One hundred and twenty. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I want to get that for my laptop. It's um, it's it's worth it. Seriously, it, yeah. You lose storage, but I mean, it's worth it. Like you, you it's just just the way things run faster. You just get a, a seriously. Just uh, thumb drives are big enough now that you can just carry around with you, or you know, or a small external hard drive. They usually don't even require a power source. Just put all your data onto that. If you really want to like have data, but everything else, it makes everything so much faster. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to test it out. Oh yeah. And finally, 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 the last thing we're going to talk about is actually a movie. Yes. And yeah. it's the new Spider-Man trailer that is out. And I looked at it just now and it is amazing. 
Yeah, I watched it today, and we have three wins and one fail on this one. Yeah. Okay. Win number one is the web shooter. Yes. This Finally. time, yeah, we, we, we see it in the trailer, uh, you know, because in the first film... Okay, well, let's talk a bit about the first film. So. Well, first of all, spoiler alert. <laughs> if you really <laughs> yeah, didn't spoil, want to watch... Spoil, yeah, we got to get that. Spoiler wanted to go watch the movie. Okay, we already yeah. screwed up something for you. Yeah, well, I mean, it's in the trailer, so they're going to figure it out now, you know. Yeah. That's why they listen to the show, all right? Exactly. So, so I mean, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you don't want to listen to the rest of it, stop now. Probably we're, we're, we're done, but... For everyone else that's really interested, it's it's awesome trailer. I I really can't wait for this trailer, this movie. Yeah, I mean it looks it looks like it's gonna be done properly this time. I'm you know like I'm, oh boy, uh, I'm a big fan of Spider Man. I'm yeah, a big too. fan of Venom. Yeah, especially Venom. I've, oh my god, like he, he's the best. <laughs> and uh, I already know I already know where you're going with this. Yeah, you know the first film with Tobey Maguire, I liked it. I thought it was very well done. Um. You know, it was I, I didn't have any issues with it. Only, but well, I, I did have an issue with the natural web coming out of his wrists. You know, because Peter Parker is a scientist; he's a young scientist, and you know, we're supposed to see his intel- intelligence through the making of the web shooter. Yeah. Okay. Second film, Doctor Octopus, was good. I liked it. The unmasking thing wasn't crazy about that. All right. Um, and then we come to part three. And I – okay, fail number one, Peter Par- – uh, not Peter Parker, sorry. Eddie Brock, which is – who is Venom, is played by uh, Topher Grace, who's um, – what's his name from that 70s show? Oh, Eric. 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 Eric Foreman. Eric Foreman. From that 70s show. Eddie Brock is supposed to be a very, very built man, individual. Yeah, he, he's supposed to be a very scary photographer. But yeah, Exactly. <laughs> and and you get Toy you know Toy Maguire uh, not Toy Maguire um, Topher Grace Topher Grace was this little scrawny guy. <laughs> Fail number one. That was strike one. There was actually a lot of strikes in this movie. Okay, strike two was um, the the Toby Maguire emo dancing. I never got that scene. Okay, you remember that Tim? Yeah. Where I he was just that. walking down the street and it was he awkward. Just started dancing for like five minutes. Yeah, I didn't know that Spider Man was a musical. Okay, so that that's strike two. Strike three was Venom teams up with Sandman. Venom doesn't team up with anybody, okay? Especially not Sandman. Hey, he teamed up with Spider Man. Yeah, well, that's a different story, okay? <laughs> it, you know what? I would have, you know, it just the, the fact that they made him team up with Sandman was just Sandman shouldn't have been in that in that in that movie anyway. Number three. That was it. No, oh, number four. Okay. Okay. The 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 the, the fail was just. How Venom was portrayed. He he looked cool, right? But that's not the real Venom that Spider Man has this art complete, genesis with. Yeah, like art. You know, like they hate each other, and you just did not see it. You did not see the true story yeah. of Venom. Yeah, we, we didn't see it at all. We, we you know the way he kills Venom in the end is actually very true to the story because his weaknesses are um, fire and noise. Yeah, and that's how it kills him or whatever. But now we got the new, and, and you know they were gonna do a Spider-Man four, eh? By the way. But yeah, they were thinking about it with Mysterio, no? I think it was with Mysterio or Mysterio or Vulture, and it was with the Sony Studios, and they were gonna bring back Tobey Maguire and what's her face and who's in all those people. <laughs> right? Yeah, we're gonna bring them all back, and then just they were about to finalize it, and then bang, they cut it. Yeah, because they thought, wow, we really suck. We should like. Yeah, we got to start do this over. anymore and start over with new people and yeah. whatever. So I'm happy that they did that. I, I watched it today. So we have win number one, web shooter. Yeah. He makes the web shooter. Yeah. Win number two, the, the lizard. Yes. All right. Win number three, we get to see Gwen Stacy, who's that, played by Emma Stone, who yeah. I like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's no Mary Jane, huh? There's no Mary Jane. Mary Jane is supposed to come after Gwen Stacy, however. Right. If I remember correctly, Gwen Stacy comes after. Okay. Okay? And the, the one fail so far that we've seen 
is uh, he becomes unmasked at a certain point in the movie. You see it in the trailer. Yeah, you see it in the trailer, and I'm like, oh, that's again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, why? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Why is this guy always unmasked? He's not supposed to be. If it's one thing superheroes are not supposed to be, it's unmasked. It's, it's, ah. Uh... All right? Drives me insane. It's like, like, come on, like, you serious? Like, it's not dramatic. It's just sad. Yeah, like we don't want to like, make it the... dramatic. Like at the like the seventh movie. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh my god, they they they, they see Peter Parker. Oh no. Okay, yeah. done. You know, roll roll ro- 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 the credits. Everyone knows who he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, just hopefully they 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 with this movie timeline Spider Man thing that they are going to. Incorporated with the Avengers somehow. Uh, yeah, um, I have cool. a I have a friend who's like heavy into uh, comics. Um, his name is Mark, and actually Mark uh, introduced me to Boba Fett. Actually, uh, the man who actually played Boba Fett in the Star Wars films. Oh wow! Okay. So I'm I'm like forever grateful. That's a that's cool. Mark. So right. thank you, Mark, if you're listening to this. Uh, yeah, and I actually got his I, – I took a picture with him, and he signed my um, Star Wars Blu-ray saga. That, signed it. That's awesome. That is awesome. I, was, I that got, the, was that at the Montreal Comic Con? Yes, it was. Uh, you know, I actually met him at the airport, though. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. That's really cool. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so I got to meet Boba Fett. And when I went to the Comic Con, he remembered me. Wow. He remembered me, too. <laughs> Like it was a ha- like one of the one of the most happiest days of my life. That's awesome. So yeah, so um, uh, my friend Mark, uh, he's heavy into this these things, and apparently he saw um, some script, something about the Avengers, and he's and apparently within the cast of characters or something. I, I forget what exactly he told me. All all I know is that he told me that he saw the guy who plays Spider Man in there. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Uh, whatever his name is, like I I I just thought of a name. It's it's something Garfield. Yeah, it's something Garfield. It's the guy who played um, Eduardo in Facebook in uh, the Social Network. There we go. I still haven't watched that movie. Actually, I'm gonna oh my god, it. you gotta watch that movie. I gotta watch it. Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah, I heard it was very very good. It's a great movie. And mind you, not all of it's true, but it's a good movie. Nonetheless, no, it's a movie. Like, huh? It's it's a movie. Of course, that's yeah. it. The music's good too. Music's very good. Cool. Cool. So I guess that wraps it up. Yes, so that's episode number two is in the bag. In the bag. But unfortunately, I will not be here next week. Ooh. So um, my friend, my friend Gabriel said he was going to, um, who, who, who's apparently, well, we're trying to get him to be a regular. Um, same thing goes for our friend Nikki. Uh, however, uh, Gabriel is going to be uh, hopefully singing for me next week so we can keep this thing going and I'll be back. Uh, after next week sounds good all right so um until next time um i need to get a catchphrase for that so i'll come up with a catchphrase (laughs) next week (laughs) san diego (laughs) that's it (laughs) all right take care you too okay we're done cool cool so that that was uh a lot more organized yeah, that was I liked it a lot actually. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, I I did too. I'm going to stop the recording right now.